Let us all kneel down, pray together. Let us all kneel down, pray together. We ask God's guidance. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And praise the Lord, thank God. We continue to study the, about the life of Jesus. Um, I think this is my fourth hour. So today I, I will cover baptism and temptation and uh, possibly that uh, death and the resurrection. Um, so the, tomorrow I'd like to uh, cover the ministry, uh, ministry of Jesus. After that, uh, um, so which is an... Yeah, the, the next four, five hours talk about the 7 a.m. At first, I think it took three hours. Uh, first, uh, um, the 7 a.m., which is the book of John, uh, Jesus mentioned that. So um, I think it's quite proper for this one uh, to relate it to the, our theme for this time, um, knowing the, our Savior. And after that, the uh, last two hours, I'd like to share with the uh, um, the message of the 13, uh, the seven parable about the kingdom of God, and then plus about two more added, and uh, about nine parables, and we'll cover for that, that we can finish the, uh, my sessions. Uh, the baptism of Jesus yesterday, I think this is uh, briefly covered that, fulfilled the righteousness. 
the purpose of our life, as we know that you and I, we are not seeking for our own, uh, own interest to be fulfilled, but we can seek him for his righteousness. So the way our Christian direction is for, for glorify the name of God. Now, as we know that Isaiah chapter 43, right? We mentioned about he formed us, created us for his glory. Um, so each one has a, has a own uh, um, a purpose to give him from the Lord. So Lord Jesus came to this word as a, like a man, like a flesh, like us. And then he grown up. And then before he started ministry, uh, he baptized by the John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist acknowledged him coming to him. How come you come to me so I, uh, to be baptized? I suppose baptized by you in this way to get fulfilled, you know, the, the, God's, uh, the righteousness. So the righteousness, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it is, a, uh, we can say it is a will of God. When, why Jesus baptized? You know, you can think about it. Uh, he doesn't have to be baptized because the baptism is important. So yesterday I mentioned it's a prototype of uh, um, for let us to follow. So he's showing us his example, how we can reconnect with God, restoring our relationship with God. Because we have a sin, a sin that we can call the you know, original sin that we have, it came from um, uh, Adam and Eve. Then, then also we, we commit the sin in, in this word, right? So the sin is the one uh, um, can kind of separate from God and us. So that we know um, the uh, Roman chapter 3, right? I mentioned that, right? Because all have a sin and fall short of the glory of God. That's what Romans chapter 3 verse, uh, verse 20, uh, 23 says, right? So the, our separations has to be restored. This, this you know, connection, reconnection is through the baptism. So when Jesus baptized, when you get out of the water, heaven is open, uh, and then the Holy Spirit coming down like a dove upon to him. That's anointed uh, and showing of like a Christian's life. The beginning of journeys should be go through with this. Uh, we believe in Jesus uh, to repent and then let us to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sin. Just like a Peter, he mentioned that in Acts chapter 2, right? That is the, uh, that is the way of connections, the true connection with God. Of course, we, um, even before we baptized, uh, still our prayer can reach up to God. If we have a sincere of faith that we pray to God, then we can reach up to God. Even though we baptize, even though we receive the Holy Spirit, if we do not sincerely approach to God, then our, our prayer cannot reach up to God, especially when we have a sin within us still. Of course, because we, the, the baptism has washed away our sin. But still, we have to repent if we have a sin. So they remove the sin so that the channel that the connection with God to be, to be pure and enough so we can draw near to him. Yeah, that's, a, that's our, um, our duty, uh, we can say. Example of the people, John chapter 13, verse 15 John chapter 13, 15, I'm sure because you know that this is a, a foot washing and Jesus mentioned that uh, I gave you the example that you also should do as I did to you. So what uh, entire life of Jesus as son of God and son of man is showing us example. So he acting as a double, pur you know, double purpose when he came to this word. He wants to show us as a children of God what we're supposed to do. At the same time, he as a, as, a, as a son of God, the purpose, he died on the cross for us to, to, be, uh, to be safe, deliver us from sin. That's kind of double purpose he has. Um, show that all must be baptized. I'm sure because Mark chapter 16, verse 16, everybody knows that this, this, this verse, I'm sure. Because uh, you have, what is it? He who has a belief and has been baptized shall be saved. Who, ha who 
has a belief and has been baptized. So it kind of connection with the end. Connection with the end means if we, if we says we have a belief in Jesus, then we have to be baptized. So that is, a, that is our true submission and showing of our true humility to follow after all his commandments. And it is, it is a showing of our, our uh, to obedient to the Lord and his word. So must be baptized. This is a, it's a, it's a pre, that's always a prerequisite. Just like in the Israelites, that uh, when, when Abraham, you know, because Genesis chapter 17, when God initiated for the, for the circumcisions, this circumcision is a, is a demand to Abraham and his, his descendants. You have to circumcise all the male, all the descendants of Abraham within eight days, you, or you have to circumcise them. Otherwise, you cut away from, from, from God. So no longer they can have, a, uh, have their covenants between God and them. So Old Testament time, even though Saturday, even though Sabbath, yet there's eighth day, they circumcise because the circumcision is important. Yeah, Because it's supposed to be Saturday, Sabbath day, they're supposed to not to do anything, but circumcision is allowed because this is the most important thing. Because this, this is... A, the, uh, the, the established the covenant between God and Israelites. Um, so in the entire, entire Old Testament, what is that there's a, the, you know, the, the bottom line of Israelites? I belong, how can they say I belong to God through the circumcisions? I circumcise and as Israelites, then this person is we can call the Israelites because they belong to the descendant of Abraham. Yeah. So, how about the how about the New Testament time? Same thing. That's why um, oh, was it Colossians chapter two that you can say that Paul he mentioned that the circumcision of Christ. He mentioned circumcision of Christ. Old Testament time is a circumcision from God and a, a by God's command. A New Testament time circumcision of Christ, not by hands. So that is the new covenant. The you know Jeremiah chapter thirty one he mentioned that because of the uh, Israelites they they um, they disobey they forsaken the, all the, co- the 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 covenant between God. So the the test of, the, the the Jeremiah he prophesies coming of Jesus he will establish the new covenant that which is through the Lord Jesus Christ by His blood. That is the baptism. So, so, so we know that. In living waters, this one is a, most of the denomination, they don't care because, uh, you know, as long as, uh, you know, even some of the denominations, they have their own uh, the bathtub and they can have a baptism. Well, it is, it is precious. They understand at least that they need a baptism that much, you know, we can give them a credit. And hopefully they further they understand the baptism should be living water and to go out, immerse. So some of the denomination, they even immerse in the water. That's why they, even their denomination name after this, right? So have this way. Living water. So our church, we never makes us to be easy way to, for this baptism performing. No matter what, how far we can go. I remember one time we have a, in, in a, when I, uh, the, uh, the, the helping that, you know, the, the, it was a Zambia when I visit there. Oh, that's a from the, the local church, the, the local, you know, uh, countryside. They have a baptism at that time. It is, it is to place we have a, uh, the church, uh, the building, and then to all the way to the baptism site. It's over 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. You have to walk. And it's not like a road there. Sometimes they're there, you know, but sometimes they read, sometimes they're muddy. All different place. So on the way, you know, also once you go to some muddy and place, a lot of mosquitoes too. So it is, we have to go there. We have to go there. Other church, I'm sure don't do that, but we, we have to follow according to the scriptures. So living water, it's the, this is the, what, what the Bible clearly tells us this message is. Um, so I think it's because you know the very, um, 
very well the the words. Zechariah chapter chapter thirteen, the mention about the verse one, and in the day fountain will be open for the house of David, for the inhabitants of Jerusalem, for sin and for impurity. So the sin is forgiven through the living water. So this is a this is a discovering of by the helping of the 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 spirit of truth revealed us. It's so precious. The Baptist must be the filled with the Holy Spirit. This is, you know, the John the Baptist in baptized, even he was in the, his mother's womb. Already the Spirit of God filled, filled with him and hands of God with him. You know, Luke chapter, chapter 1, if you open 15, 20, I mean 66, they will mention that. So it's not anybody go there, you know, baptized in the name of Jesus, the person's sin is forgiven. Of course, the name of Jesus is authority, but the ultimate authority given from the Holy Spirit. So our church, when we, when we uh, perform the baptism, even I myself, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, the pastor in the church, the church. It's not I myself, you know, just whatever go, you know, I just, uh, oh, you can be baptized. You can be baptized uh, by my own authority, the, you know, in the name of Jesus. No, you can tell our church is very orderly. First, we can, we can examine together in the, in the council board. And then if the person is baptized, then uh, we can, uh, by the church authority given to me, and then we go to the, you know, nowadays here in the LA area, we go to the, you know, the sea uh, and the beach area, we baptize them. So I received authority. This is given authority from the Holy Spirit. The, the source is the Holy Spirit. It comes from the true church behind. The church is the body of Christ. The given, the given me this authority. So I, as a, as, a, as, a, as a minister, I baptize them in the name of Jesus. Because all this one, you can see the whole pictures, all these come from the Holy Spirit. It's not personal, my own, you know, jurisdictions. So sometimes, of course, there's a remote area we call that. You know, sometimes we are, it cannot reach. There's a no church, you know, around the whole, you know, Hundred, several hundred miles around. Then we pray to God. We pray to God. This person is enough to be baptized. Then, then we can buy the best and best knowledge after that. And then we pray to God and I baptize them. So because the, these conditions, and God knows what we can do at the time for the salvation of the person. Then we baptize that. So John chapter 20, 22 and 23, it mentioned about importance of the, the ministers or importance of the church, whole congregation, receive the Holy Spirit to be one mind, one accord. Let the Spirit of God has this given authority to having this uh, great um, role as a church, the forgiveness of the people's sin. So it's not a personal, but it's a for by the authority of the Holy Spirit. And the being humbly and lowly, you know, that's, that's uh, because of Jesus, he, ex Jesus he asked John the Baptist to, he himself to baptize. I'm sure because this is definitely his showing of his humility. So when we baptize, we need to have a true humility. Humility is another sense, knowing yourself. So sometimes um, I have noticed because if we do not really repent, and to be baptized, of course, that person, you know, sin is forgiven. They simply just roughly, you know, repent. But if the person not truly repent, later their, their Christian journey is very, very difficult, actually. A lot of, a lot of struggle, actually. So knowing ourselves, that means humility. How great we are. You think about it. Huh? How great you are. How great I am. You know, like a, if you read a... Um, book of Daniel, the, you know, the Daniel, uh, the, he, was, he was captured. He was ascending to, you know, he was sending to the Babylon. At that time, the king Nebuchadnezzar was the uh, greatest king in the Babylon. His kingdom was great in a powerful country. So he, when he was in the palace, he looked at around his, you know, the, the, the palace and around with, with my wisdom, with I, I built at that time, so, you know, this, the, the voice came above that I took away your wisdom. What will happen to him? He just took away the wisdom. He become like a beast. Remember, 
none of us, none of us, we can say we are better than others. If sometimes I can see uh, some of the children, they have uh, some handicaps, uh, like uh, what I call that there's uh, some people, some, uh, some uh, brother and sister even having that uh, um, autism. It is autism, autism, autism. Yeah, it is. Uh, but God give them a special gift. Yeah, one part is, is, is weak. So it kind of we can tell if God, why God doesn't allow all this part of my, my, you know, my brain have this kind of high intellectual minds and also all the things I can understand like higher than, than now. Because there's a purpose. God let us know, humble ourselves. We are not completely, you know, we are super ourselves. So humility is important part. Hum Once we have a humility, the salvation is very close actually. Why the Pharisees cannot receive the salvation? Why they, they against, the, against the Lord Jesus? Because they do not have a humility. Even though they keep the Sabbath, even though they offer the tithe, even though they, they seem to life like a righteousness way they can work their thought, but they don't have a humility, which means they do not know themselves. So if you look at the John chapter, John chapter 9, when Jesus is healing the born blind man, you have noticed, right? Because later on, Jesus talked to the, the Pharisees, to, to them. You say you, you can see. That's why your sin is still remaining with you. Because you suppose, you're supposed to know you are the blindness. Because you, you do not have this humility that you find out you're a sinner. That's why you never come to me. You know? So humility is a precious our characters that we can approach to the Lord. So Jesus showing us in his baptism. And after that, heaven is open. You know, the Holy Spirit came down upon like a, a, a dove. He's showing up anointed. He is the high priest. In Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 6, 10, they all mention about importance of his high priest. Well, let's look at the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse from 11. Chapter 11, verse 11 and 11 to 15. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 to 15. But when Christ uh, appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through, entered through the greater and the more perfect tabernacle, not, not made with the hands, that is to say, not of this creation, 12, and not through the blood of God and Cal, but through his own blood. He entered by holy place once for all, having obeyed, um, obtained eternal redemption, 13. For if the blood of God and bull and the ash of the, the hippo uh, uh, sprinkled, uh, those who have, have been defiled, sanctified for the cleansing of the flesh, 14. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit um, uh, offering himself without the blemish of God, cleanse your conscience, uh, conscience from that work to, to serve the, the living God? Verse 15. And for the reason he is the mediator of the new covenant, in order that the, since the death has taken place for the redemption, of the transgression that were committed under under the, the first covenant, those who have been called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So once you read the because this passage can that Jesus as the high priest, how we can tell he is a high priest when he died on the cross, the veil between the holy and holy place and holy place, the veil is open from top to bottom, separated. So what that means. We just, just open the bell. So what's going on? What it means to us? Because Jesus anointed us. And we, he received the Holy Spirit. You and I, we as a royal priesthood, right? The first, first, uh, uh, the, uh, first Peter chapter 2 mentioned that. Uh, we as a royal priesthood, which means we are the priest. And uh, Paul, he mentioned that within us, the temple of God. So we are the priests. You know, once the priest go into the holy place in ancient time, in the time of Israel, 
the priest cannot go into the mercy seat because mercy seat is a is a the the the, the, the what is a technical that uh, the the um, ark of ark, ark of God is there, right? Anybody who getting in there, they died because that's the place where God is there. So once a year, you know that there's a there's a seven feast uh, toward to the toward to the before the tent of booth. The Israelites they have uh, these uh, uh, the 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 day of atonement, which is the high priest go inside of the holy and holy place. Even at that time, high priest only can go in there once a year. At that time, so all the Israelites, especially all the male, they go to the, go to the Jerusalem. Out of, outside of the temple, they're waiting for the for the high priest to to for the forgiveness of his people. So he bring the animal's blood sprinkle on the top of the mercy seat, which is the ark of covenant on the top. There is in the two cherubim is cover up there. Once the, the sprinkle there, and then there's nothing happen, which means God forgave the Israelites. After that, high priest have to get out. That's all he can do. So high priest even, if the high priest have a sin, he died there. Very simple. So no one can go in to bring his body out. So that's why the high priest in the you know the, the, the you know the legs they have a, the strings, and then also there's you know the, the bell together. So if a high priest finish, nothing happens. So quiet means that this high priest died there because he has a sin. He doesn't he doesn't remove his sin go in. Actually, he died there. So. It is a, such a solemn and scary the moment. But for us, it's different. Once he died on the cross, at that time, you know, the, this veil is open. We as ourselves, we baptize in the name of Jesus. We cleanse ourselves. As we become, we receive the Holy Spirit as a priest. We go into the holy place. Once we go into the holy place, directly we can see that in front of us, there's a mercy seat. Of course, in the, the before, before the bail, the, there is a golden um, um, what is um, a lamp? We can call the golden. Um, it's called a lamp. A golden lamp for the for the for the. It is it is for the, for the our prayer. The Book of Revelation mentioned there, right? In at that time, ancient time is only priests can go only that much. But when Jesus died, bail is open. Our sin can be forgiven. We are directly approached. How we can possibly directly approach the mercy seat by the blood of Jesus Christ? Because we applied, because he is the high priest, by his blood, make this happen. Our sin can be forgiven. This understanding is important because once you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, your sin is not no longer with you. When you pray to the Lord for the repentance, your sin is forgiven. That's why the first John chapter, I mean, first John chapter one, if you 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 can repent, sin is a forgiven. Of course, each sin is a the the seriousness is different. God only the in the Bible only defined the, the sin that the mortal sin is the one against the Holy Spirit. And be, without that, then the serious another serious sin is you know the sexual immorality is, is, a, is a serious sin. But remember, the sin, except, uh, except uh, the mortal sin that the, the Bible described, Jesus mentioned about the, the, against the Holy Spirit, the other sins that we are committed, that we can bring this sin, we have to repent. That's why church is a place that you can come to the Lord to repent, so you can continue to reestablish your, your life to back. Sabbath is why important? Sabbath is the day we can come to the Lord. We can offer our offering, spiritual offering to God. Remember the book, book of Romans. Is it 11 says? We have a, when we come to the Lord, we, uh, we have a living sacrifice. Remember, this is our worship. This is our worship. So every Sabbath is very precious. We, we can be sanctified ourselves through the offering. So offering is in the in the. In the Old Testament, we can go sin offering, you know, we can go sin offering, guilty offering, and a peace offering. These are three offering actually we combine together. We are doing in the Sabbath day in the worshiping time, you know, in 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 the, you know in the Sabbath worship. So Sabbath worship, worship 
is a, such a precious for you and I, because of through we can be sanctified. So do not neglect to keep the Sabbath. So keeping Sabbath is a role, is a, such a precious. So remember, because what, what book of Revelation, uh, no, I'm sorry, book of Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2 verse 3, then God blessed, Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 says, then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in, in it he rests from all his work which God has created and then made it. So somehow God sanctified the seventh day. Once we are getting into the holiness, then we can be sanctified. The purpose of a purpose of the temple of God, the ancient time is a tent of tabernacles. Purpose of the tabernacle is a purpose for our sanctifications. We have to learn that. Uh. So Sabbath is a precious. So through the baptism, and then he, when he get out of the water, he received the Holy Spirit. And then he as acting as a high priest. When he ultimately, he, he himself to become a high priest when he died on the cross. That was he as acting as a high priest. For us, showing us the peace offering to us. Book of Hebrews chapter 4 was to say that. And reveal to the Israelites the begin to his ministry. Yeah, so that's a, that for sure. Because through the baptism and the heaven is open. Because John the Baptist testified. Oh, look at the, the Lamb of God. You know, for our sin to carry our sins. And then temptation of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 4. I'm sure because we know that these are the three, uh, three temptations. Chapter 4, verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus was uh, laid up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devils. And he says, Jesus was uh, tempted. Do you, can you define the, define the difference between the temptation and test yeah, test temptation test when you um, you know, um we I, I already talked to this one to the e2 student before i have this in you know, mits because <laughs> book of james we talk about it so tempt tempt Temptation is not what outside of things to, to uh, what can I say, uh, initiated. We, our flesh, initiated. So our flesh initiated. What is the purpose? For purpose for, purpose for flesh, actually. That's actually temptations. We're gonna, you know, it, you know, when you go to school, then you have a, the midterm and a, you know, final, uh, final exam, and you haven't studied. But so far, until the midterm, you are A. But you know the final, final exam is the one that testing it. The final test is for the more than 50% of weight. You have to have a well, you know, show your, uh, to, to doing the good score in the final. But you know, you haven't, you haven't prepared. 100%. But you know the next person, the, by next to you, to, we have the same, you know, the, the final exam. He or she is a classmate, is a very good performing. And at that time, you can, you can correct more than half of the answer already. But you know you cannot make A out of this. And then you, you, had the, you know, the, the one who, the, the, the professor in front of you, but yet... <coughs> He's sitting on the day, you know, he's so tired. He just lay himself. He's, he don't see you. That time is a temptation is within you. It's not test is a tempt you. Do you know what I mean? Temptation is out of you because out of your selfish desire, selfish demands out of it. So that when you have attempted that, you can look at the next, next students, you know, the classmate, he have all the answer, and then you copy it. You know that it's not yours. You copy it later and say, oh, I got it. Hey, I got it. Wow, oh, I have the good job. I get it. No, it's a lying. You're tempted. You're supposed not to do that. Liar go to God to go to hell. You know that, right? 
because one of I remember one of uh, Pastor Raymond he mentioned that in this one the uh, facing of the you know the the, uh, the the lake of fire remember right Book of Revelation says so. Um, so tempted temptation and test you have to be clearly you can say that you can see the differentiation there. let's look at the um, Colossian I think it's, uh, no. Yeah, second Corinthians, second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. This is very obvious. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 says, test yourself to see if you, you are in the faith. Examine yourself. This is a, this is a pretty much a definition of test. Test yourself. Test yourself. Or you can test and examine yourself. You can see that your life of prayer, you can see your life of the, you know, you'll be the word of God, how much you have a heart to submit to God. You can tell yourself that's a testing. In other words, you know, the, what the, what, um, the Moses, he says, book of, uh, book of Deuteronomy chapter eight. Deuteronomy chapter eight. Verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. And you shall remember all the ways which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years that he might humble you, testing you. So God testing the Israelites. This word is not says tempted them. Remember, so God, so God, remember God never tempted us. Do you, do you believe so? That's what the James chapter 1 verse 13 says. God never tempted us. Temptation has come from us, our flesh. Yeah. So test is a precious, actually. God testing us to whether we are or truly we have a faith or not. He's testing us throughout, you know, you know in our life. So when we, when we are in a, God allow us a temptation, yes. God allow us a temptation. It is a truth, too. Through the trials, through the, it happened. So when Jesus was uh, Jesus was was cast into the wilderness for forty days at that time, the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, cast into the the wilderness. God led him to be tempted, to Satan also. But temptation is not God offered. Actually, God originally offered him, led him to have a forty days of fasting prayer. It is it is. So it's a constructive purpose. Before his ministry, he can gain the strength, the spiritual, spiritual, you know, to, to, to gain the strength in himself. So three and a half years of his ministry in the, in the near future to be, to be fruitful to, according to the God's way to be fulfilled. But who's the tempter? You can say tempter is not Jesus. So always remember Satan is a tempter. Jesus, in the Bible mentioned about tempter, it says, so temptation is the three possible sources. Always remember three, because I'm sure because you remember one of you before your J1 and J2, I think you mentioned about it. Three source of temptation is one is a Satan. Satan using the material sources. You know that, right? If you are the son of God, you can, you can, you can change this, this stone to, to, the, uh, to the bread you can eat it. He using the material, but yet the tempter testing. I mean, it is not te it tempted him. It tempted him, and also another temptation you find out that uh, Je bring Jesus up to the you know the the top of tabernacle of the you know the temple. If you're a son of God, you can you can you know you can jump down, and then uh, you are son of God. So the, all the angel come to safely you know land it in the ground. So showing the people, showing the people, you are the son of God, which is spiritual pride. Spiritual pride means what? It's come from you. In a nature, because the man's nature, we are very easily get to be a proud of ourselves, especially when we do something, great things, especially other people praise a lot. It happens. Sometimes, you know, anybody's, anybody, we also tempted, minister attempted. If we don't pray, if we don't, if you don't pray for us, 
we are also vulnerable to the sin, actually. This kind of sin of pride. Pride is sometimes very subtle. Pride is sometimes when you look at it, you know, it's I always, oh, thank God, thank God, you know. But inside of me, no, no, it's, I have done a lot. Hopefully you can remember my name. Uh, remember my name. I'm the greatest one. You know, you can remember me. I have done this, okay? This is human nature. Sir. If we are not careful, that's why Jesus said, watching and praying. Watching and praying. So do not, you know, let you to, into the temptations. So anyway, so the, that temptation, another temptation, Jesus, remember, you remember that I brought him to the, the mount and then showing the, all the worldly glory. You know the worldly glory, how great it is? When you, when you finish your college, I'm sure on the way to college, you, because you know the worldly glory. And a lot of rich people showing up their life, lifestyle. Now. A lot of people to have, you know, the, the, a lot of materially, material wise, you can, you can, whatever you like to, you can gain from the, uh, from the, you know, the, the, the monies. So you want to find out richness. Remember, true, ha true happiness. In other words, you get true joy never comes from the material. You can tell a lot of people in this world, when they're seeking for material, seeking for fame from the people, seeking for high position, end up, they give up their life. They sometimes they're taking the drug because they cannot, they cannot fulfill their the soul in their heart because true satisfaction is not come from there. But Satan using this way. Satan is a simple, you just bow down to me once. I will give you all this worldly glory. That's temptation. So Bible says that Jesus was tempted by the tempter means he has a flesh. Don't think that Jesus, ah, this kind of, you know, this kind of a temptation is nothing for the Jesus. Remember, of course, some people say that. But for my belief, based on my understanding, Jesus was tempted. Jesus, you know, the, the, the book of um, the book of Matthew chapter 4 mentioned that Jesus was tempted means uh, his flesh is a start. But how he can overcome with the word of God. You know, okay, so we can tell, right? Um, temptation. Yes, God allow us. Do you know the very good example like a job? Job, you know, when the God, God because God blessed Job because he's a righteous person, he's very faithful to God. And always he, he, he wants to check himself there whether he's, you know, he has a sin or not. He always even cleanses his children's sins. He is a righteous person. And so, so, and then because Satan was there too, the God says, have you seen the job? There's no such kind of faithful person in this, in this world. You know why he just, why you, why, why he feared God? Do you think he, he feared God with, with nothing? You know, the tempter, you know, Satan say that. If you can, if you can try, then you can try to him. You can try to, you know, remove all his belongings. That's what God allow, allow Satan to, to tempt it, the, the job, but God holding the, the job's life anyway. So temptation was allowed by God. It doesn't mean that he tempters. I always remember. Temptation of the, the method of temptation used by Satan, seizing the opportunity, never give a Satan to, you know, to, the, uh, to the, this kind of opportunity. You remember the one, uh, the verse book of Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Chapter 4, verse 27. And do not give the devil an opportunity. But this time, the Paul, he mentioned about the, when you are anger, because you are angry and the, with the hold your heart. And anger itself is not a, it's not a sin. But anger, you, you, you have a hold your heart. And then do not let it go. Then it gives a hold to the Satan's. That's why. So it is the best if you have a if you have anger within you, frustration, you know, resentments, hatreds, all the hatreds, all these things are within you. Remember, before the day go by, before the sunset, which is you know, before you go to bed, you can look at yourself, remove out of you, leave it up, uh, the, give it up everything, and then you sleep. That is the blessing. Um, using the desire of the flesh, we know, right? Because we mentioned about the, um, our physical weakness. Because we are all weak, actually. No one can say, you know, it's. I believe in Jesus for 20 years, or still can be, still can be tempted anyway. 
Because you know, I'm become I'm become 60 years. You know, I can I can be I don't have to be tempted. No, because I can be tempted anytime. Actually, I have to be careful too. Causing one to become proud. You know, because we know that this one and twist the word of God. You know, Satan is tempted the tempted. You know, with the the tempted Jesus. If you're son of God, which means that that's a twist the word again. The using the actually word of God, the temptations. Temptation. It's a very subtle sometimes. Well, let us remember, using the glory of the word uh, to serve God, you know, because it is the glory of the word. Um, remember, when you, when you believe in God, remember, serve one master. We cannot serve the, the mammon and God. Jesus said two masters. We're supposed not to be exist. One master. You know, when you serve God alone, never your life to be become, you know, the par- under the poverty. So you are such a like, you, are, you have a, only you live in the tent for the rest of your life. Never done that. God provide you. Don't worry about it. God is a living God. God never treats you like that way. If we respect God, God respect us. He will give us what we need. Don't worry about that. And the temptation, way to overcome the temptation, controlling our desire. Yes, controlling our desire. In other words, is a, sometimes controlling our desire is, in other words, we can call it it's a, um, the... Uh, we have to know ourselves. We came from the flesh. You know? Rely on the faith to overcome the. So, never rely on ourselves, for sure. Satan is stronger than you and me. So I say, Jesus, I'm a Christian. Come on, man. You are, you are, if you're Satan, let's have a, let's have a, let's have a, you know, fight. I fight, I fight with you. You know, I can do it. I'm a Christian. No, never done that. Satan is smarter than us. We have to rely on the wisdom of God. And also we rely on him. You know, when, uh, when David, he fight against the Goliath, he never, he's initiate, I'm a stronger than you. He never, that, no, never done that. He rely on God, remember. And rely on the, um, and that, or practice the word of God. Yes, that's a spiritual muscle. You know that, you know the word of God, practice it. You know, Jesus mentioned about the, mentioned about the, you know, the, remember the, uh, uh, the, the little parable he talked about, there is a there is a man. The father says, "You go to the go to work in my vineyard." The first son said, "Yes, I, I will go," but he didn't go. Second son says, "I don't want to go," but later he repent, he repent, he go. Which one is a submit to the you know the, the fathers, the one who submitted? You know the John uh, the, the Matthew chapter five to seven. Jesus speak on the mount. The last portion you can tell, even though maybe I myself the preachers I preaching a lot of things, but if I do not follow it. Then if I don't follow, then God on, on the last day, I do not know you. You have to follow my words. You don't do that. So if even myself, if you and I included, we have to practice word of God. That's my, my become my, my like a fruit. Your minister is, you know, I speak to you. This is a gift from God. It's not for mine. Definitely. Oh, I have to finish. Uh, so I cannot, I'm a little behind, but uh, tomorrow can I'll be a little faster mood. Can continue tomorrow temptation and then uh, death and the resurrection and then ascension maybe that one i can finish now i try to do my best finish that's a prince silence